our 65-year-old gentleman, this is his transverse view of his abdominal aorta. You can see when measuring from the outer wall to the outer wall, that's measuring 10 centimeters, more than our 3 centimeter cutoff. Looking uh, at the aorta filled in, you can see a very small portion of that is actually lumen. The rest of this aorta is all covered by thrombus. So our gentleman does have an abdominal aortic aneurysm. When scanning for a AAA, do remember to check your probe marker orientation. Do position the patient supine. Do measure from the outer wall to the outer wall. And this can be tricky since the lumen can appear to be an outer wall. Remember to check and look for the outer wall of the thrombus. And do remember that any AAA that's greater than 5 centimeters, there is a high risk of rupture. Don't be afraid to press firmly on the abdomen to obtain a clear image. And don't delay any surgical or definitive management if you're having indeterminate uh, ultrasounds or any delay in care. For aneurysm pathogenesis, 18% of people with triple A's have a family history. Other predisposing factors can include history of Marfan syndrome, atherosclerotic disease, hypertension, and hyperlipidemia. These risk factors combined to create an increasing expansive force on the aortic wall. This expansive force is described under Laplace's law, which wall tension is equal to the pressure times the radius. The more pressure that's going through the lumen, the and the greater the radius, the greater wall tension, the greater wall tension, the greater risk for rupture. Prominent features of, histologically of a AAA include destruction of the media of the aorta. Um, you may see increased atherosclerotic disease. You may have decreased elastin, collagen, and fibrolamellar units. The adventitia may have inflammatory cells. And on a AAA, saccular outpouchings do put you at an increased risk of rupture. To our histology lab, we can see we have the lumen way up at the top of our screen with the intima, the media, and the adventitia. And here we can see this is actually a dissection where, where there's been a breach in the intima layer. Blood is dissecting in through and you have the destruction of the media. For triple A's, the rate of dilatation depends on Laplace's law, um, and it's important to note that large aneurysms will expand faster than smaller aneurysms. On average, aneurysms expand 0.25 to 0.5 centimeters a year. Features of triple A. These patients may present with syncope, back pain, abdominal pain, shock, or sudden death. 50% of patients may present with a tearing or ripping type pain. 10 to 12% of patients may present with syncope. With rupture, these patients present with hypotension. Often, they have massive and rapid blood loss. They decompensate very quickly. And you may see evidence of retroperitoneal hematoma, such as a Cullen or Gray-Turner sign or iliopsoas sign. They may have a chronic and contained rupture. They may not be hypodynamically unstable in that moment. For emergency department management of AAAs, uh, resuscitation and blood pressure control, if they are hypertensive, are, are key components. You want to give them IV fluids, crystalloids, such as lactated ringers or normal saline. You may consider blood products. Um, and then for hypertensive, they need to be controlled with IV medications, such as a beta blocker like Esmolol or a labetalol drip, and consider nipride. After resuscitation and blood pressure control, you need to consider surgical consultation immediately. Thank you for watching. I'm Dr. Virginia Stewart. Thank you for allowing me to share my clinical presentation, ultrasound, fast review, emergency department management of AAA, and we will see you next time on Clinical Subspecialties.